Sorry, I forgot to turn I on the mic. I was going to say, I don't think the mics are on. <laughs> it's live! <laughs> Welcome to Friendly Jimmy's. And you thought you were going to have to just watch us with no audio mm-hmm. today. Audio, they're already... Well, I'm on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How April are you four. today? Yeah, really good. Have you noticed something different today? Our decor, something different about our decor today? Jordan? Are you wearing a Hawaiian shirt? Uh, that's not different. <laughs> 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 that is Lower absolutely not different. There are a few things on the table today. Ah, uh, yes. And there is one new addition. Can you spot it? If you do, you win a Mars bar. Yeah, first one to win, uh, get it gets a Mars bar from me, Slav, I'm, guaranteed. I'm talking to you. <laughs> me? Have you spotted I win a Mars bar. Uh-huh. Well, I know for a fact you won't be getting that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. be so... Hey, there's alternative facts, my friend. Yeah, and what are those alternative facts? Could be your sneakers. <laughs> it, it involves sugar. That's all I'm Could saying. Could be Turkish delight. If oh no, you're going to get me that scary Fijian version of Mars, aren't you? <laughs> it's called like yum yum. Is that what you're getting me? Yum yums. <laughs> <laughs> if you could, if you should be so lucky. You know, what's the funniest <laughs> thing I found in Fiji what? in the markets. Have you been to Fiji? No, I haven't. You've been, man. Yeah. That guy, <laughs> yeah, I am from there's a, uh, there's a um there's yeah. a, there's like a big like alcohol problem there, I think but like so a lot of the, the cassava the, problem yeah a lot of the a lot of the um supermarkets have having like, too much fun problem they've got like prison <laughs> fucking like you know like you know basically little prisons like so that no one can like steal stuff the funniest thing I saw it's like L A it's really strange it's like paradise and you go to buy like soap and it's just sort of like buzz you in shotgun style the funniest yeah. thing i saw was canned goat no canned mutton mutton's bad enough you know not <laughs> not canned my canned the thing is, meat obviously makes it so much worse i wish i bought it as for for the joke but you know what yeah that so is? do i in fact we probably can Let's I've get canned it. mutton and try it. <laughs> I've had it. What? Have Not you the had canned, canned ones, mutton? But I've had that thing. It's a it's a national Fiji dish. It's their what? version of beef jerky. Canned no, mutton. No, that's yeah, not well, that. Their national dish is is the is the. It's I like don't a actually ceviche. know what's their national. It's thing. the ceviche thing. It's like coconut milk with fresh fish. It's the opposite no, of canned those mutton. Those are the the you know. There's two separate uh, Fijis, right? No, I don't know that. There's uh, a clean Fiji and then there's a dirty Fiji. You mean I'm there's talking Fiji. about yes, the dirty Fiji. Right. They like mutton. Clean and, and dirty. Well, there's... there's is there's, that, is there's that too Fijian and Indian. There's a lot no, of No, it's bang on. It's bang on, right? You go there. That's really... In oh, fact, no. it, it all just says that when you go to Nandi, the area that is controlled by the Fijians, the reefs are pristine. You go to the other side and they don't exist anymore. They're just powder. It was because the Indians just went in there and just started throwing dynamite in it so they could make a cheap buck at the markets. And that's the clean part because it's not messy down there. Fuck. Don't you forget that, Miss Love. I don't want to know any of this. You go snorkeling there. I, no, no, I don't want to know any of this. I, I thought I had a very nice time in my resort and the people were really nice. I had a hungy and the hungy was amazing. And Do you know frankly, what I've learned about Miss Love for me. in the last couple of days? He likes food. He, he really, well, I mean, I knew that. <laughs> but the thing that is surprising to me, Wait, this love. Your camera's out of focus. Let me just fix that. Oh. Well, all right. I, I'll try, <laughs> I try my best there, dude. Yeah, yeah, Miss Love. Now, I'll let you in on this amazing revelation about Miss Love as soon as the camera is fixed on me. <laughs> so and so it will you, shock so and that, amaze you. So in fact, you, the camera's probably freaking out because <laughs> of how great this news is. But you have to get it in focus, so this so this can be clipped out of t- context. Is it? Is yeah. It, you think that you think that union's going to just be like, we we want the dude on Mishlove. How much does he like hungies? Eighty percent, ninety percent, eighty five percent. Racist. Dan <laughs> uh, Scheme Eleven, thank you for letting me know that Jordan's camera was out of focus because that would have been really annoying in the edit. <laughs> Schemey McGee. Uh, yeah, Mishlove. We all know how much Mishlove loves food, <laughs> but he equally hates. Specifically, dynamite fishing. Mm. Haven't heard his opinion on super trawling. Uh, you know, you know, cyanide fishing. None of these things have. I, I have an opinion in gold and solid yet, yeah, but that that is what turned him from a Trump voter. Yeah, it's true. What dynamite? Fishing. Dynamite. That was one fishing. of the big ones. He hates it. 
Well, it's hard not to hate. Is <laughs> 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 that like, Ali's anti And I'm a packy. Like this, it yeah. means that this is really hard. <laughs> think, like, because I, I'm okay with a lot of shit. Yeah. Eating dogs, love it. Damn. Yeah, he's down with all of the things yeah. that we. No, no, we don't want to eat it because it's haram, but we are okay with them being eaten by us. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Christ, that's a joke. A U W U Panthera. Actually, no, I, I'm gonna. I, I want gonna you do? to come. A- a- yeah, no, that's yeah. his culture. You respect it. That's A-U-W. right. Otherwise, in fact, yeah, they're, they're racist if they don't respect it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you, yeah, you so never told us what the odd thing out over here is. Uh, well, that was... It, it's not even odd. Let's not... Mm-hmm. You're not calling a spade a spade there when you are saying that Scott, sickest cunt out there, and might I just say sickest album out there, is clearly the odd one out of the four. But let's be honest, like, come on. <laughs> For guys <laughs> that grew up with Cursor, like, really, which one is more of an odd one out? <laughs> why, why is this one up here? Isn't this so indicative of this podcast how truly stupid our tastes are? <laughs> Dude, my Instagram handle literally says exclusively into Cursor and change that with Rick Ross. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but also, is that actually signed? The yeah, is that one? actually signed? Is that part of the album cover? I think we all know the answer to that. I don't. Well, I'll give it to you now. No, this is Cursor. Wait, what? Oh, you didn't understand that? No. Probably should have done something more that didn't resemble <laughs> a half sentence. I'm waiting. It, it is his. That yeah. is his. Of course it is. This is no, not no, a no. signature. But this is a tag. But did he... So wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. <laughs> wait a sec. So he didn't... So he did not sign that specifically for you. No, nah, I don't think he signed Damn, it specifically for I me. Really no, somebody else gave it to me at a show. And that's like, been, okay. Heard you like curse your Because like, I'm such a boomer that I'm just like, hey, why would you stick a signature on such a nice portrait? It ruins <laughs> it. But it's his signature. It's cursor it signature. It still looks But it. that's the whole point of tagging. He's that's the difference it. between oh, a signature so, okay, and a tag. Okay. Tags whole, ruin things. So and that's what he's vibe. done to his, What a badass. He tags his own <laughs> albums. So that's he graffitis. He has such disrespect for everything that he disrespects his own art. He graffitis on his art. No, it just. It <sighs> Can you imagine if he walked into where the Mona Lisa's kept? <laughs> no, I, I would like not to think. I, 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 no, there I, is I, a position at the bottom, isn't there? It's like a ripped off piece that he could go. <laughs> yeah, bro, right there. Hey, Miss, like, oh, okay, fuck. so b- just before so we started insane. the podcast, Miss said we should talk about GameStop, and both Jordan and I were like, nah, look, the boat sailed, it's too gone. Yeah. And on top of that, I don't understand anything about it. I, g- I can try <laughs> to explain it, but, like, the entire feed is filled with GameStop stuff. Oh, so like, why do you want to know? See, we're cutting Short. edge. You guys suck. We're cutting edge. Me and you guys. Come on. No, it this just shows fun. that our audience probably just goes like, okay, uh, it's uh, seven o'clock. On a Tuesday, time to flick over from my other source of information, ABC Business News, to the Friendly Geordies podcast. I should now, hope so. what's all this news that I hear about Reddit? What's that? <laughs> that well, I should hope so. But that is us as well. But, yeah. like, I, I, I really feel like I'm ahead of you guys now. <laughs> you are. I am zooming circles around you, Zoomers. You guys are still... Down with GameStop. Mm. I'm bored of it. And it has nothing to do with the fact that I don't understand the first thing about shorting. <laughs> Short, okay, Bill Shorten, is that is that who did it? Can I okay, I'll can I for, I think most Maybe. people would know what shorting is, but I'll just like quickly explain because technically you can't bet on something failing, which is shorting. Shorting is saying that okay, mm-hmm. whatever company, let's say friendly Jordy. Someone decides friendly, friendly Jordy's is about to will. crash pretty badly, is my opinion. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to short it, which is bet on the fact that it will crash. You can't technically buy a stock or crash. So the way shorting works is, let's say Friendly Geordie's stock is $20, right? I have a feeling that it's going to go down to $5 in the next one month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy stock off Friendly Geordie's at whatever the price is, $20. Then whoever I'm buying it from... I say that I'm going to give you um, whatever the stock price it will be in two months plus $10. So whoever I'm buying it off from is obviously assuming that the price is going to go higher or is going to stay at the same level. I'm saying whatever the price will be at two months, 
I'm going to sell it to you for that price plus $20. My guess is that the price is going to go down to $5. So when I sell it to you, it's going to be $5 plus whatever amount I've promised you. And that way I can make a big amount of like... Damn. Money. Yeah, and why does that exist? You explained What's that better than Chris that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Um, so basically, that's what shorting essentially is. So, but what's why does that exist? That's just stupid, superfluous nothing. I that's, don't think it's that is gambling. It is well, it, that's all the of it is that's kind of market. gambling. I don't think it's necessarily that bad. Why is it to legal? have the idea of shorting? It's as bad as like uh, having the idea of buying stocks. Really? Though? I don't think it is because it's kind of. But it's using the whole point of buying stocks that you're investing in the company and you're giving it capital so that it can go on and do something. There is a use to buying stocks. Yes. There's not really a use to sitting there and being like, I got five on this one going down. There isn't. At it's least it's just put it in sports bet. Don't put it in Wall Street. That's but a why stock. don't you... Okay, Tab imagine... That's a stock. Imagine yeah. like a... Uh -huh. Uh, you know that the future is going to change and everyone's going to move towards renewable energy and there's a coal company and you know this coal company is going down. It's it's as as like relevant right. as like you investing in that green company that you're saying this company is going to go down. I'm actually going to bet on it going down. No, because if you're betting in the green company, you're giving that green company money so it can expand. Okay, I see. I see where you you're coming from but i'm thinking that those kind of like those uh unethical behavior is throughout the whole game like it's not just shorting i know mm. but it's just what i'm not getting around is the same thing that i don't like about fuzzy songs that have very non-specific meanings to them i'm too autistic for this stuff i don't <laughs> what I'm saying is I don't understand abstract concepts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not exactly easy to... I mean, look... No, I understand the concept. Right. That's the wrong way to put it. But I just... It, it's just as soon as something is like... Has no purpose in life, it kind of annoys me. Oh, so when it's what, what are you doing there? And it's like... Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> I'm juggling. I'm juggling fire. And one of them's a sheep. Weird. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not I'm really juggling. producing any value yeah. at yeah, all, yeah, is yeah. it? No, yeah. it's not. No, yeah, yeah. Then stop doing it. Yeah. I'm juggling one on one side. It's a dollar sign. The other sign's a euro sign. Ooh, that yeah. Hurt. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one am I going to drop first? Bet on it. That's the stock market. <laughs> <laughs> well, finally, someone puts it in terms I can understand. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's very troubling and sad. What, the whole <laughs> stock? Yeah, the whole shorting thing. You know what's troubling? Right? The troubling is actually, the here's here's what I find troubling about the modern day share market, is that ever since like um, interest rates have gone down for banks, so basically keeping money in your bank has become expensive, uh, mm. but people still don't want to invest in actual shit. So all of the idle money is going into stocks. That's why you see, like, on the right. one hand, after Corona, we're heading into a depression. And the stock market is off the roof. It's because, like, everyone's parking their money there. Mm. So basically, stock market is bad in that way. It's just a way for people that are being penalized for just keeping money and not investing it to invest it in a way that is not actually investing in shit. It's just creating bubbles. Mm. That's the problem. The sh right. shorting bit or the other bit okay. is... That's an interesting those are some Look, I, I'm always of the school, though, that it's better to invest money in the stock market ethically than it is to invest in housing. And that's pretty much... 100%. Th those are the only options that anyone... No one ever thinks of investing in an emu farm. Hey, but housing's <laughs> rock solid. Literally. Wow, he's about to make the tradey point. Come on. You can do it. Yeah. Uh, no, everyone's got to live in a house. That's never going down. You need to have a roof over your head. Well, he's expanded it too much. This guy's been to uni. He's <laughs> gone further than Well, what were that. you going to say? It's usually this. It's like, eh, eh, eh. <clears throat> you, Sean? <sighs> what did you get? That's right. Shafe. His house is... Well, I don't need to be here, do I? He can fill my role. <laughs> don't you reckon that's that, that is a tradie's knowledge of investing? But isn't it and true? I'll be I'll give them this. It's more than me. But isn't it but true? You know, but you know what? Like that's the reason why housing doesn't collapse because of people like Miss Love. The idea. <laughs> is it, I mean, I mean, like I don't mean this in a bad way. Extensive knowledge of property development. <laughs> Economics is the only science that gets like seriously affected by what people are thinking about it at any given point, right? Like if physics or any other kind of science, it really doesn't matter what you think about it. it like it's gonna rain tomorrow. Like. If you want it to rain or if you don't want it to rain, doesn't matter. Doesn't it will matter. rain tomorrow. But the fact that mislove and like millions of mislove's in Australia think the housing market is solid 
which means that they will keep investing in housing because they think it's solid, which is why it will actually be solid. But it is somewhat true that it's like everyone needs a roof over their head, mate. You can survive without, you know, natural confectionery company stocks going up or down. Try surviving without a warm bed. But that's not why... Yeah, but this is the other thing about the stock market because there is a lot of, uh, you know, Fortnite players and stuff that cannot survive without G-Force energy drink. (laughs) As more than a bed? They they need a room, dude. I don't know if they do. Well, they need They need a power point. That's what they need. Well, they usually connect it to houses, you know. Yeah, they, they are found in there. But they are also found in the toilets of public libraries. <laughs> and they'll do that. <laughs> bullshit. What do you mean bullshit? You're I know. Have, you're not having a I've land... I've had a sneaky one in there before. Well, you're not, I'm sure you have. But we're not, they're not, I haven't seen any land parties in North Sydney library uh, <laughs> bathrooms anytime recently. <laughs> but look, I'm no... I'm no uh, <laughs> fuck, man. I'm no expert either. So I'm just going to take your word for it because you have glasses. Um, now, nah, people are saying like... Well, they're basically like talking about some man who's like, oh, you don't buy the stock. You borrow the stock. Um, right. But basically what I said is right. Maybe some of the terms are not right. And I'm pretty sure you buy the stock. You can't just borrow the stock like that. But Man. but look, yeah, why would you borrow the stock? Why would anybody just trust you with stock? It's, 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 it's like what, that's what it, hedge funds it, do. Yeah, but like the whole borrow, buy, it's all, again, semantic. It's like the point is that you're betting against the success of this company. I mean, you know what, fun. though? Actually, while you guys are talking about this, because everybody thinks that they're a genius when it comes to investing, this really reminds me of when the World Cup comes around every four years and all of a sudden everybody knows about soccer. Yeah. And every conversation you have is like, oh, yeah, 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 Ronaldinho is in really good form at the moment, even though he's probably at this point Dead. 43 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Older. Is he oh, older? Yeah. Ronaldo. And Ronaldo. He's never been better. His son is <laughs> retiring next week. <laughs> Um, well, but it's not your fault because all of them are named Ronaldos. How many fucking Ronaldos are there? Well, there's Ronaldino. There's Ronaldo. Ronaldo. There's there used to be a great Ronaldo. Ronaldo who is it's now known as the Fat Ronaldo. Yeah, Fat <laughs> Ronaldo. Because there's another greater Ronaldo who's that came by. Well, I'm investing too. in his stocks. All right, I'm, uh, I'm going to invest well, he, in he that man. I'm shorting him. I think he's going <laughs> to die in three years. Oh shit! Yeah, it's true. Stop dude. mocking Bill Shorten by calling him shorting. <laughs> Bill shorting. Bill shorting. Dude, Bill shorting. people people definitely shorted on Bill. Dude, Ronaldo <laughs> was caught with like I think he's been caught with a prostitute many times, so that's a stock to Dude, be. Ronaldo. I'm surprised about that. We, when you have that kind because he that was makes so a lot of money, they the say ball. hookers and cocaine. Why True. are we surprised when someone makes a lot of money and they end up getting hookers I'm and naive. cocaine? Wait, so you thought that he was just gonna be at home reading the Bible? Yeah. With and then his Hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, I thought it was a home reading the Bible, and then sometimes he'd eat like meat on a sword for lunch because that's what South Americans do. And then the rest of his day, he just spends in his massive garden with a soccer ball on his own, just going, hey, ho, hey, 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 just dribbling for like most of the day. Yeah, that's what I thought he did. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do you spend time with this guy? Because I'm pretty sure that's what he does. <laughs> but weekly he gets pr- prostitutes well, and cocaine. I didn't know that. Too. I didn't know. It was shocking also, to me. Also, he's European. He's not South American. He's from Portugal. Rena- the really? new Ronaldo. I'm talking about the old Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Oh, the fat Ronaldo. Yeah, well, fat you shouldn't Ronaldo. be allowed to be called Ronaldo and not come Resilient. from South America. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, know your history. They did all come from Spain. You've been great, folks. Show all the best. <laughs> Miss <Mistler. laughs> Come back. I need to know more about Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Spain all right, look. We should, can we get some questions for you guys before we move on to the pod? So keep doing some banter while I short those questions. He question. actually added, he added more knowledge. Uh, uh, <laughs> look, if you guys have any tips for me about... Uh, Ethical investing. And by ethical investing, yeah. I don't mean like, don't invest in cigarettes. <laughs> the board has some women on it. <laughs> don't give a shit. I'm talking about renewables pretty much. Just <laughs> how, how do I invest in uh, lithium? What, what fucking app what is What the hell is that? lithium? Uh? Oh, that's the currency thing, Dude, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> I got is it. Is that the alternative currency? That's like <laughs> probably as one of the, but it's also an element that is used in solar panels. Shit. 
Also, uh, a song by Nirvana. That's the first thing I came to mind for me. Of course it was. Uh, and I would not be surprised if Dave Grohl has <laughs> many albums called things like Lithium Athbusters. No, <laughs> no dude, he, he definitely has shares in Lithium, I'll tell you that much, because that guy is rich. Take dude, that how crazy is this? We got an update on Fat Ronaldo. Fat Ronaldo owns <laughs> an dead. investment firm <laughs> and invests on behalf of pro athletes. That's who you're looking for. Fuck. You were right, and you wanted to short him. <laughs> you should short him. <laughs> And Fuck. I've got, uh, surprisingly, this question is for me and not Jordan. Ali, when do you think the next election will be? I think we already know that. We found out the other day, right? It's going to be like uh, the third Maybe quarter not. of uh, 2021. Maybe not. September, October? No? Well, I just looked at the polling, and that's what we'll be talking about in the actual show. Mm. But and now I'm, I'm shorting... <laughs> That it'll be in 2022. <laughs> Can we use that why? as a term? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. We're just shorting. We'll just use it for betting for Can we use on. shorting for betting? Yeah. Like, yeah. And, using and trigger it wrong, a though. lot of people in the comments in this process, great. which, but as we all know, is the point of this podcast. Because <laughs> you're using it wrong. If you're saying I'm shorting it for 2022, that means you're saying it will happen any year but 2022. Oh. oh. Well, I, I don't retract my statement. That's the whole point <laughs> of what I want to do with shorting. I want to well, make it such a meaningless term. Oh, so you're saying because the polls are so tight now. Oh, we'll talk about it on the main pod. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but also, you, yeah, you if you guys that. have any tips, because we are going to be looking into this ethical investing, and I don't know anything about investing, so I'm just going to assume that some randoms in the comments know about it. And if you want, if you want that sneaky, tasty content... From our real, from our real pod, short on over to uh, Patreon, and do some shorty. There. <laughs> no, don't short our no, Patreon. Wait, don't short there. Don't short our Patreon. Long big there. short our Patreon. <laughs> Long or big short our Patreon. Where we will be talking a lot about Bill shorting. <laughs> Tim Chuma says I have How do ethical. Not smoke weed. I mean, well, that's not talking for you, Ali. But, you know. Thanks for outing me. Uh, even hey, though everyone that watches this podcast thinks that you're the stoner. I know. I only take stuff like MDMA and shrooms. I'm sensible. Uh, <laughs> and I'm Ramora and Short I do not. Short <laughs> A-N-W-U. We wish. Um, so, uh, Jordan, your advice for what you should invest in. Do you want to see? Y- yeah. There's an advice that come right back to you. Invest in ethical super, which I'm pretty sure was your advice to them. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> don't, don't point this back at me. Don't tell the audience to Uncle fuck Uncle Gucci uh, says your, here's your advice. Poo poo wee wee. Beautiful. That's why we're here on Twitch. <laughs> for stuff like that. That's what we're really liking. Ali, um, what's your opinion on Leon Trotsky? Who's that? That's the question. That's like my he version the of American the muff or Russian muff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. It's Trotsky Trotsky's was the uh, guy who like invented... Uh, he, Trotsky was... The let's dude, see how close you he are. He's the forefather oh. of communism. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hot, kind of. He was the guy... He was the guy that was considered to be like the martyr for communism, right? In Russia. Like he, like yeah, Lenin fucked him over. Yeah, you could say that. No, Stalin, no, Stalin, Stalin fucked, him fucked him over. Stalin yeah. fucked him over, yeah. He was, he was. Lenin like, liked him. Yeah, my Lenin bad. liked him. Dude, he, Stalin respected him too. Because he was a very, he was a schmout motherfucker. But his problem was that, uh, which was his actually demise. He didn't know shit about Russia. He was in Russian urban college Moscow boy. college intellectual. Right. And uh, so he didn't really understand how like this vast Russian, the rule hinterlands really worked. Which was, I think, the reason why he ended up never... Stalin was just had a head start. He understood ground realities better. But Stalin would also admit this, that Trotsky was smarter than him. Mm. Yeah, but street smart, speech book smart. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it really does, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, we don't have any of that. we got no street smarts amongst us. Smart Ali's smart. pretty street smart. <laughs> well, he's from... Packy, yeah, packy, come on, busker mm, smart, yeah. street smart. Sorry, well, no, 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 you you've been in a lot of alley brawls, and I assume that that is street you're smart. You're both. That's, you're, that's you're like street smart being and in a, smart. getting a Mensa yeah. test result. Ja- jack of all trades. You're jack of all of trades. None. I mean, look. In fact, you're in, you're from holes. You're in Holesworthy. You like, you, you could su- you can sort of adapt. I reckon you're street smart in Pakistan, and you're also you have to be street smart in uh in Australia. You'd be getting rolled like once a week. Yeah, but his yeah, street smarts is I don't catch the train. 
<laughs> and that smart. really reduces the amount of roles that you get. It does. It, it to, reduces to a the solid amount of two a week. This but guy I've coming lost. up to you and be like, hey, brah, can I borrow a shiggy? Yeah, it's like, you're a millionaire. Why are you still mugging people? Old habits die hard. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not buying shiggies from As if that's not going to be his next album's name. Old, Old habits, habits die, die hard. hard eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I look, What's I it? Is he still. Does he One of a kind. You know how he was coming out with an album every year? Is that still happening? Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, he is. He's still killing it, dude. Can we invest in the Friendly Geordies company? Joe Corp. Dude, let's take it public. Is that a thing? No, I'm a 100% shareholder. I'm not going to let someone oh. take me into a hostile takeover. I don't know anything about the stock market at all. And if I just went, yeah, okay, here we go. And uh, uh, Richard Wilkins just bought all of my shares. He is now my boss. Finally, he talks more about Kim Kardashian. Uh, can you imagine? Do you know who's he, buying he, all uh, your shares and taking over? Uh, who's, who's that guy? The simp. Uh, the fucking guy from... Um, Channel 10. Or oh, whatever. Joe Hildebrand. Hildebrand. Yeah, he's by. Oh. He's, he's going to be the chairman of Friendly Geordie's Corporation. Wouldn't well, that be amazing? Now you work for me. <laughs> Just take down that main video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you can have it back. Dude, and if Richard, what's it, whatever his name is, Richard Wollstonecraft. Richard your, Wilkins. Yeah, if, you, if he the, took The man with the world's biggest head. Dude, if, if, he, <laughs> if he bought you out, you just know it'd be like, that was for that joke about it talking about how I've got cracks around my eyes. Now you'll see what it's like to have some cracks around yours. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just... Holy (laughs) hell. What a deep, friendly Geordie's cut that was. (laughs) Took me a moment to register and I was repeating that same joke for a year straight. There you go. That one... Holy hell. That one hit here. Hey, we've got oh, you liked that one? It's really funny. We've got another question for you. So you were, so holy hell! So you were a fan of the Today Show back in the day, as opposed to Sunrise? No, I'm just a big fan of very, very, and you know this. You both know this. Very esoteric, D grade Australian celebrities, and then when you make very specific jokes about those esoteric, esoteric celebrities. I'm in heaven. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I think our whole audience dies. is. No, I love it. <laughs> it's so, it's so, dude, I walked away from that show that was like, Jordy's cancels the media. Just be like, <laughs> his hair is good. That was the main <laughs> thing. <laughs> That's no problem. I just f- hyper focus on shit I like. And I'm just like, what do you think about the media scheme? I'm like, well, Richard Wilkins is still in that scheme, right? Yeah, well, it's fine. <laughs> Dude. You know what? Uh, it's not too far away from what I think either. It's <laughs> yeah, w- yeah. The people that look like that, I, I really do think it might just be that. The fact that Richard Wilkins uh, is extremely tanned and you can't tell if his face is leathery <laughs> or cracked. <laughs> it hits that perfect little yeah, splinter in a second. Ground. And I imagine it's because his face is so saggy that he's constantly getting pumped and injected with plastic. So yeah. it's kind of in this nether zone of being like, oh, no. Some of it's hard and the other's soft and something's just winning today. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I want to know? You know what I would pay all my money to know? Why the hell doesn't that guy live in... Sorry, I know you might... You know, you know, this, you don't have to know about him, but... And just a poll. Can we get this on uh, <laughs> yeah. Twitch at the moment? How many of you know who Richard Wilkins is? Yes. He's related to Lisa Wilkinson, right? Could be. I Could don't be. know. But poll that <laughs> but shit. It would make a lot of sense. Pull that shit, Jimmy, or whatever the. But if she, if he was well, related to Richard Wilkins, uh, if Lisa Wilkins was related to Richard Wilkins. Richard Wilkins would probably be that tree in Game of Thrones, that thousand-year-old man that lives in there. Yeah, I've talked <laughs> a lot about Madonna. <laughs> okay, so the first. Wait, 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 I need to know why doesn't he live in LA? Why does or doesn't? Doesn't he was born for LA? Okay. And he'd be a king there. You know why? No because one I, I, I know, no, I do know oh. why. Why? Because he is shit scared of losing his job. Oh. And so he always wants to be years close to the bosses. And that's why he stayed around for so long. Well, he deserves So everything. it's not actually a fair analogy to make him the tree. He's more like <laughs> the eunuch in Game of Thrones. It's like Wait, someone has to look over this realm. Is he? And of course, report on what Britney Spears' new Vegas concert looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is he the guy that got COVID from uh, Tom? Yeah, Hanks? Yeah, yeah, he got COVID from Tom Hanks. What? Did he? 
He, he got COVID early, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, it's so good. It's it's amazing that COVID in Australia was really just a rich man's. It's the new gout. Yeah, it's the king's disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to be balling to get COVID. <laughs> to get COVID. I I heard his interview on uh, I think was it Woody or something? Was it? It was either Woody or um. Kyle and Jack Hill. He came up and he's like, mm. I don't know. He, I, I don't even know if, if, if Tom Hanks gave it to me. I probably wasn't, but like, it, it's, I feel so bad for the guy. It's like, because he, because uh, apparently everyone was blaming Tom Hanks for giving him COVID. Well, probably was bloody Hanksy boy. Screw you, Hanks. I'm trying to, Unless try yeah, yeah, trying to kill Richard Wilkins. <laughs> We've all thought about <laughs> no, it. No. We've never gone Take through. It too far. <laughs> We've all dreamt hey, about it. A lot of salami <laughs> is asking, does he wear a wig or not? No, no of course. That's all, all, that's all Wicklands. It's all, what's this? Yeah, it's, it's all Richard. <laughs> does anyone know <laughs> who he is? Richard, uh, Richard. A few I people, his but name. a lot of people don't know who he is. There was a lot of Richard who, who, I don't know. Dude, I don't think they were. He's even. a celeb, he's the celebrity gossip reporter on the Today Show. I don't think he. And he looked like he was 70, 30 years ago. And music correspondent. And music correspondent. Thank you for that addition, Twitch. I That's love, why you're there. I love that man. If he was leader of the opposition, we'd win. I. Don't think that's the case. Come on. I really don't think that that man has much charisma, and that's why I like him. I, I think his face does. has a I lot of charisma, but I think, but I think self, that he personally... I think he's self-conscious, but I, I, th- I think that he's real. He's a real man. Like, when they were painting him out about real his man. Hair, don't you like, reckon when he's... When they were just, remember that thing, they were just like, hey, yeah, look at Ishii, it's a lounge man. Is he a real man? And he was just kind of like, <sighs> I won't be forgetting this. Like, he's, just, he's, he's, an Af- he's a real human being, man. I don't know. Every time I hear his voice, I think, are you the guy that does the voiceover for Nick Scarly Furniture or not? But he I love has that. Such oh, I love it yes. too. I love it too. And probably, yes. He does yes. talk like this. I, yeah, his voice oh, is yeah, there. Yeah, you it? remember that? Yeah. But I like incredible. That. Well, they say that Tinseltown is quite a <laughs> tough place to get a job. <laughs> Brian voice. Seacrest has many jobs. In my exclusive interview with him that lasts three minutes. Three minutes is too generous. The, the interview went. <laughs> Thirty yeah, seconds. The interview went for an hour, and most we could. Channel Nine gave, graciously gave us twenty six seconds. <laughs> Fuck. All right, should we start with the main show? Um, <laughs> this is the main show. Yeah. I don't know why people, people are missing out. That's why you need to sign up to Patreon. Ah, uh, fuck. He is a sex pest. One hundred percent touches his female colleagues. What? That yeah. is an accusation. Oh my no. god. Well, I hate him then. No, I don't think. He, how are you throwing that out there with ba- just baseless accusation? Yeah, Where are you getting that's this? That's really that's actually so baseless. <laughs> it can actually get you into trouble. That's that's what defamation is genuinely for. But all right, so let's go on a break and then come back with the main pod. We've got loads of segments for you. We've got um, Labor's potential after the new um, polls edging closer, and Jordan's take on why that's happening. We've got the Burmese coup. We've got a meme review section. And uh, Miss Love is still thinking of one. Me, 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 review. That was you'll be getting twenty minutes of that in the middle. See you guys in a bit. Looking forward. And we're back. Welcome to the Friendly Jody's podcast, where we discuss latest political events and some incredible insights mixed with uh dick jokes, mostly dick jokes. How big is your penis, Miss? Well, we've discussed this <sighs> at, length. at length. You know what? And I was it s- is pretty long, but not that long. That's the definitive answer that we came to. That's what we're going to say. Very stick specific. With. I'm not going to say it on Twitch just because it's just like a gut feeling. It's like, I feel, I, I don't know if I should just tune in up late and I'll answer it straight away. No, is but we all know that the more that you talk about your cock, the more chicks get interested in it. <laughs> Yes. And you're the single man now. And you are the pimp of the podcast now. And True. Is, that is Ali's taken. If you like them long, hit me up. If you like them thick, stay the fuck away. Yeah, I like it. Heaps because it rhymes. That's the main reason I like that <laughs> saying. Uh, <laughs> is that a saying or no, did Ali just make it? He made that up. <laughs> I just made that up. I just made that up. Of course up. it's not a saying. How would that stick? That's like saying a saying is like, the horse with the, fe- the thickest mane tends to be an un- uh, inconsequential to the race. What a saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, works for me. All right. Oh, I thought it was pretty glib. <laughs> Jordan, you, you you were dropping some truth bombs this afternoon when I came. Um, it kind of clicked. Why? So, Miss Lowe, have you heard? You probably have. You work for the Friendly Joys ecosystem. Yeah. You should know that the polls are suggesting that Labour is ahead. And the Liberal 
are neck and neck. That's what I saw last. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so as Miss yeah. Love discovered, uh, the LNP, the Labor National Party, <laughs> is now neck and neck and competitive. The Labor, yeah, the the uh, the LNP, the Labor National Party is is head to head. With the ALP, the Australian Liberal Party. Liberal Party. <laughs> yeah. That's correct, correct. That's why they are called the Coalition. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, the co- and they are a coalition hey, with the hey. Green Party. The commie alition. <laughs> yeah, commie alition. The commie alition. Co- uh, well, yeah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I knew that. Damn, now you're schooling me, miss. I didn't, oh, I, I didn't realise that that's what the Labor Greens launch was. <laughs> but now you've given me a lot to think about, as you always point out, I think is the only political point Miss Love has ever made. You see this? This is the same colour as Labour. And that's red. Red. <laughs> and that's you can't, red. I realise you can't see that on camera. <laughs> no, now they what? can. What? Oh, wait, they oh, can't. Yeah. No, they can't. <laughs> no, now they can. You can't see it. Um, but think look, about it. That, <laughs> look, it Miss Love has for the last five years Hell still yeah. coming to a conclusion. But before, yeah. I still want to know... Jordan's point because like yeah, I, so I wasn't I. aware of it so and it's I. actually pretty cool. So why what's happening? What's the what's the grand sh- change in the paradigm, Jordan? Well, if you look at the polls, once JobKeeper kicked in, obviously Scott Morrison was going to get a massive lead, and I was always of the opinion that well, that's it. Labor shouldn't change their leadership. I really do think that Anthony Albanese was their best bet Hell and still yeah. is, but I thought there's no way that you can win this election. And I'm still very sceptical that they can, but Anthony Albanese was always saying, steady as she goes, and in the fourth quarter, as they say in the footy, mm-hmm. we'll be kicking with the wind. Dude. And potentially we are getting to the fourth quarter. You're kind of right. He's saying, if he can pull it off, I will we'll be so happy. But sorry, continue. But you're, already, you're a Labrador. You're always happy. Yeah, but I'll be more happy. I don't think that's possible. I think his point you was wait, you that wait. the Liberal Party, first off, people don't necessarily like the Liberal Party. It's just that the Labor Party gets so much negative coverage every election that they should just be taking wise what the party machinery has always been saying. And I think that might help with him as well, is that he's a staffer boy. He didn't grow up in the unions. And the unions are always of the opinion that you should be campaigning, which I fully understand because the unions... When you're a political staffer, you would have a different upbringing and they are super risk averse. I personally agree with campaigners, but again, it's because I basically am a campaigner. I'm supposed to just be a loudmouth. But they, when you're, when you're running as a politician, they have this saying that in Sussex, Street, in Sussex Street, they wonder, which is where the Labor Party headquarters is, they think about how to stay off the front page of the Telegraph. And in Macquarie Street, which is where the Liberal Party is, is they think about how to stay on the front cover of the Telegraph, obvious for obvious reasons. But what they're trying to do, and this is exactly what Albanese has done, is just remain invisible the entire time. That's Biden. That was Biden's strategy too, right? Mm. And he's kind of right because it's just like it doesn't give the press an opportunity to hate you. And he's always choosing the safe response. And you see all these numpties on Twitter saying, Oh, I can't believe it. He's so ineffective. He never says anything. He just answers with such bland answers. Yes. Yes. That's what he's doing. You know what he is? He's the John Howard of the Labor Party. And that's so mad, dude. But John Howard was always on, like, he, he was he was a media darling, wasn't he? Yeah, but the, he himself was a very boring man. I remember being interested in politics, and I just used to think, the reason that I don't understand this is because I'm 12. <laughs> but then I went back and listened to his speeches. You zone out. <laughs> He's the prime minister of a country. He should have interesting things to say. He doesn't have anything interesting to say. It's just... Uh, kept interest rates low and uh, I believe that George Bush is a nice man. <laughs> That's all of his speeches. And, <laughs> and that guy's Miss Love seal of approval. Uh, Texas is good b- barbecued. We don't... Different kind of barbecues we get in Australia, so it's nice to mix it up. That's why I like <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a little too ethnic for my palate. <laughs> And my palate. And I still to this day have not gotten the answer to what exactly is ranch dressing. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was coming to turn with pesto, and now you brought all this new yeah. stuff in. <laughs> the Italian pesto was, as they say in Leichhardt, 
very zany. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't get my head and around. And I've got to admit, oil. basil is a good herb. <laughs> can't get my head around it. I was of the opinion that Australia didn't need olive oil, <laughs> as canola oil already existed. But then, <laughs> but then and being Australian a fan, canola oil is far superior to European olive oil. I still want to know more about, like, I want to know, you had another point too. Oh, yeah, all right, so go and go, <laughs> stop just paying out Howard. So but I, I, yeah, he's just, look, I feel really bad that I made the title of that video uh, stand-up show that you should buy, available at Friendly Geordies, because there's good information here, but I wish that I didn't call it Why John Howard Really Sucked, because I think personally as a man, he is the most likable Prime Minister we've ever had, and you know what it is? He's just not, he doesn't have a big ego. Mm. He hates arrogant people. Yeah, he that. hates people that are narcissistic, and he or, almost as much as he hates the unions. <laughs> Apparently, Biden is the exact same. What hates uh, ego? Uh, he one of the only instructions that one of the first instructions that he made to his like staff was that if I see anyone at any point <coughs> talking down to another staff member in the team, doesn't matter cleaner whoever. If I see that, I <laughs> promise you, I will fire you at that spot in front of everyone. Amazing, that's so funny. And then I remember that his second order was, "What does this button do on White House desk?" And he pressed it. Don't say, sh- don't say he should a nuke. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I think he'd know where those are. Okay, like, okay. he's pretty familiar with Washington. Oh, is that being the, the Pepsi while. button? Isn't that incredible? Because that's the only No, it wasn't Pepsi. He got Richard's button, dude. He presses the button, and then a door <laughs> opens, like one of those, like, Bond villain doors, and in comes a butler <laughs> with a Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard all year. All year, dude. That's, that's what Trump's addition to the White House was. Wait, what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because it's like it. not even it a joke. It was an executive order. <laughs> Sign that shit. Um. This is actually like Isn't it amazing? Actually like it was it's just not even a joke. <laughs> it was so on demand that it didn't even need a menu. There was no understanding. The butler is at the ready because it just happens so frequently throughout the day. <laughs> He's just there ready to go. Your Diet Coke, sir. Who the hell are you? I'm your butler. I provide the Diet Coke. Get the hell out of here. Very good, sir. It was a pleasure working for you. <laughs> I didn't know Connor worked for Trump. Yeah, he did. I know. Oh. Are you sure you don't want to try oh. Coke Zero? No. I'm very good. <laughs> That's so nourishing. That is the that is the like food equivalent of being given like a a uh, like minestrone soup made by some babushka in the hills of Bologna. I feel like I've eaten. I'm not hungry. Yeah, 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 yeah. It has that feeling, doesn't <sighs> it? <sighs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's what Trump had on his desk. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's just, dude, you know what Trump was? Look up to that poster. It was Richie Rich. It's just Richie Rich grown up. That's him. Yeah, it's that's a real Richie Rich move. Don't you think? And there's probably just a lever on the desk to the side. You open that up and there's McDonald's on the other side that opens up. Don't you think it, it's like way less of an F, like... And he did do that. He did go into the White House and he was just like, okay, this is the executive order. We're going to bring in the Chicago Bulls and we're going to feed the McDonald's. He did do that. He did do that. Richie Rich. He he is Richie Rich. He's Richie Rich. How much more of an effort is it to just pick up a phone and say, hey, can I have a Diet Coke? (laughs) I know the button. A red button. Doesn't have time. (laughs) He's he's like, you're sending pictures to Kim Jong Un. He's like, this button will ruin your life. (laughs) He's pressing every day for Diet Coke. But come back to the polls. <laughs> Jordan, what's happening with... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Did Biden cancel him? Or cancel yes. Him? <laughs> How annoying is that? I, I wish he kept uh, it. This was like a, well, I respect my opponent and uh, his legacy Dude, to this office. Just change it to, to all brand. Yeah, easy. I know. Yeah, it was such Gen- an easy Gen- move. Gen- in my brand drink. Uh, yeah. My tummy's acting up again. Like, come yes. on. Yes. Oh. Anyway, so now you dude, the greatest president of all times. 
Who? Dude, that's Trump. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm back on board again. You know, I googled <laughs> why he loves fast food so much, and he, he's because he's scared. MSG, dude. That's why he loves fast no, food. No, it's, so it's much. that he's scared. Like he's obviously like patriotic and shit, and he's like the best era for him was like the '80s. So obviously, she's like McDonald's, but like also because he's scared of people tampering with his food. So it's like, yeah, they get that stuff out in 30 seconds. There's no time to appreciate it for anyone to po- poison yeah, my good burger. Good point. That's why. Good point. That's why you do it not want to be. Really? Yeah, he's just like, I, I'm scared someone's going to poison me. He's like, yeah, no, they, they got 20 seconds max. And I, there's no one's going to go back there and get poisoned. I go to some fancy restaurant, some French. I'm not even doing this. It's been so long I've done his accent for so long. Isn't that amazing? French it French just French flies the in the face of that documentary, Super Size Me. Because at the end of his presidency, he looked younger and fitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like apparently like, yeah, basically all he eats, which I think is so funny. You know, but there's a lot of people <laughs> spitting in Trump's food. Probably, but like no poison. I love but he's not walking in as the president being like, yeah, can I get some hot wings? He's got someone going there, right? Probably a bit no, of both, man. That butler. Huh? <laughs> Probably a bit of both. Eddie? Like how hard is it to order food? Like, can I have a Big Mac meal? Seven words. Yeah, but is the president of the United States, you're just going to walk in there... You're, you're right. Probably someone, yeah. Because like the probably like some the poor person working at Macca's is on like below minimum wage job and just like I can't pay my bills because you. But like it's not my fault. That's the that's the loony Democrats. Okay. Like yeah, 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 right, yeah, 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 right. yeah, right. yeah. You're right. Uh, anyway, no, but like uh, Jordan, coming back to it because yeah, sorry, you sorry, were sorry, saying yeah. something about the polls being affected by the whole uh, Biden administration and the Google fiasco. Yeah. Well, I think that if you look at the polling. Seems to be a direct correlation because it's it's been steadily increasing as what Anthony Albanese predicted and I didn't have faith in his tactic but I thought that it was a better tactic than what Shorten was doing uh, given Shorten's experiment. Just do the exact opposite of what he did. But I don't blame Bill Shorten either for trying that tact as well because he was going for the thought of any publicity is good publicity. So if my name is constantly in the press... At least people will be thinking about me, I guess. But uh, if you look at what happened now where it's just bottomed out and you look at the recent coverage of Josh Frydenberg freaking out when Google said, we're just going to leave Australia. And then he had to come out and go, no, no, we're, we're, we're going to negotiate this. Because they think it's amazing. Ever since they've won this third term, they've been in a rock and a hard place between Murdoch saying you need to shut Google down because they're really fucking us over. And Google saying no. Uh-huh. And they have had to try and mediate that. And the thing is that obviously if the Labor Party was in, they're just going to pick Google. But the Liberal Party is not in that position. Mm. And so th- th- this is their... I-, I really think that this is their work choices. Everybody thinks it's just the fact that they did secretly pass work choices in COVID and no one knows because they've just got such a clinch hold on the press now. But Did they? Yeah. Really? They sneaked their shit? Pretty through? much. Pretty much everything that was that. in work choices is now legal. Really? Under the guise that it's temporary. But let's be honest, is it going to be wow. temporary? Especially seeing as just a couple of months ago, Scott Morrison was very confident that he was going to win the Senate. Which I think that, good. If he wins the Senate, then we have another 2007. Because that's just it's the same thing as Queensland. If you really see what the Liberals want to do, people are going to rebel. Right. But... I think that in this instance, Google was doing... uh, So, obviously, like, Josh Frydenberg is scared and it really shows. And the other thing that you see is that there's all of these Murdoch and Fairfax hacks that keep writing about, my articles are getting buried. They used to be at the front of Google. Now they're, like, page nine, page eight. (laughs) And Google is being really really Chinese about it and being like, oh, deepest apologies. It is just a test. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that what is happening is that they are burying stories that are pro-coalition, which is virtually all stories. And so all of the Australian press that is more mainstream I is con- moving further down the algorithm. I thought conservatives like the free market and freedom of press and freedom of choice. I don't know if you're taking the piss anymore. I'm taking tell. the piss. <laughs> wait, wait. He's making a point. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking the We get the, the point, though. Just, just, just <laughs> We get the point, but, like, uh, elaborate. I'm just saying, like, Scamo, 
push me out with your message, mate. Do you like freedom of speech and freedom of press or don't you? Uh, come on. This One or the other. Too true. Well, in I, the long run, though, are we getting hypocrisy. excited about a bigger evil taking over our immediate evil, which we'll figure out yes. as smaller ones? Well, see, <laughs> oh, this well. is the whole thing. I was... And everybody was so angry at me for saying this, but I completely agree with myself. What a surprise. <laughs> I did not like the fact that social media companies decided that Parler and Trump are no longer a thing. They decided the President of the United States doesn't get a voice now. Well, that is that supposed to be the most powerful man on earth. I understand that it's a bit of a charade, but still, it's very symbolic. Yeah, but also, like, you're not the only one. French finance minister, who by no means is a conservative, he's part of the Macron government, said that he's uncomfortable with a digital oligarchy making decisions like that. Angela Merkel, who, again, is not, like, this conservative um, right-wing... She said that the whole Twitter banning Trump is very problematic. <laughs> That's the word that you used. Um, so you're not the only one. That is a legitimate concern. A digital oligarchy is making very big decisions. Well, what I will say, though, is that I think the big tech companies are run by extremely intelligent younger people. And so obviously what they're doing is they're favouring governments that are environmentally conscious. I, I really think that that is actually a big part of it. And then the other part is that you are... Uh, stopping us from making money. So where's the incentive in supporting you anymore? So I think that behind the scenes, Google is manufacturing consent now. And I'm fine with that because they're on my side, baby. But like, yeah, I think that in the long run anyway, it's got to be better than Murdoch and the press controlling society because... At least, like, when it comes to, like, uh, the press in this country, they have traditionally... In fact, they have. Their entire 150-year existence. City Morning Herald has supported the Labor Party six times. Six times. And all of those times, you can bet your bottom dollar, was because they knew that inevitably the Labor Party was going to win that election, and so they did it so they could get coverage into the next one and being like, see, we're being nice to you. I like the idea of Labor winning 70% of the time. And if that means that they have to compromise on tax evasion or whatever, at least they're passing laws that stop mass spatial extinction. Well, talk about tax evasion. The Liberal Party has been, like, enacting tax evasion laws. They're just making tax evasion legal now. Mm. Like, all the tax that people were paying, they're saying, that now you don't have to pay that. Mm. Like, even, you know, small things like... Did you... Have you you noticed how um, all the money that was given to companies these corporations as bailouts because apparently they were going to lose all of their money and end up like gaining share prices so there's the, there's a demand to like say hey what about that money that you gave them they not only did you give them bailout money but they actually ended up making more money than they were supposed to so and they're just trying to uh, and scott morrison's response to that was like i am not in the business of envy i'm gonna leave that to the opposition well said, Scott. <laughs> Thank God we have that man in charge. A poet. But surely, surely it's a situation of like, there's always going to be, if, if there's a power vacuum, there's always going to be somebody in charge. There's, there has to be, there's always going to be some sort of overarching, overarching sort of uh, dominant power force. You know what I mean? Yeah, the power is, are you talking about media, right? No, 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 I'm talking about anything. I'm talking about media, like whether it's media, whether it's Google, whether it's, you know, like, I don't know, like, and look, this is actually the guy that created that that burger shop that we all went to in Perth or whatever. <laughs> remember that place where Ali got a burger for breakfast? <laughs> Perth, Brisbane. Oh, I Carl's remember him Jr. being really sad Carl's about Jr. it afterwards. Carl's I remember being actually. I don't regret one bit. Carl's Junior is fucking sick. I didn't even Carl's know he was. In that was the whole thing. Like I saw his depressed face afterwards, and <laughs> I, I would I would deal with that. I would deal with that. <laughs> but it is Carl's Junior. Yeah. So like, if, whether it's Carl's Junior, Google. Yahoo, Ask Jeeves, someone's going to run the show, right? Yeah, that's what I think too, Ali. And I just think that... I mean, I'm, I'm asking. Well, I, I honestly think that Google, by its nature anyway, at least it gives you a shot. I understand that it can also just completely black you out. But what is the difference between that and the current press system at the moment? The current press system is that they don't even give you the opportunity to build a platform in the first place. Whereas Google, it's kind of like you're no longer serving our interests... 
you're gone. There really isn't that much of a shift in power. It's in fact, if anything, there is a slight shift towards content creators and things, right? That's true. So it's I think, and you know what, especially like, like dude, it is mm. going to benefit. Yes. Yours truly, yeah, yeah. In the next election, because I can, I, I really do think this now. I think that Google will be supporting the Labor Party in the next election, and it'll be interesting to see Damn. who of those two win. Because it still doesn't mean. I, I suppose I'm a megaphone, and the Liberal Party still has all of the megaphones in this country. But Google now has the capacity to turn a lot of those megaphones off. True. And we'll see how that affects things. And if I may suggest, Google, let's try with RV Yemen. (laughs) What, turn him off? No, 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 turn him up. Yeah, turn turn him up. up. Increase the volume. We need some truth speakers. Christ. Yeah, what are you trying to do here, Ali? Keep us all in the dark? (laughs) I'm only semi joking about the truth speakers. (laughs) I know you are. But that's Um. interesting. That makes sense. (laughs) I can understand how uh, the power dynamics would be shifting. But don't you think that this whole Google bill is a bipartisan thing, though? Wouldn't Labour support it? Who's that chick, the green chick, the Hanson Young? Mm. I saw her... um, Senate hearing with the Google um, CEO, like the Australian Google CEO, she was really hawkish. What do you mean hawkish? She was saying like, she was basically telling the Google CEO that you are saying that either we follow your way or it's the highway. To which the Google CEO wasn't saying this, but like basically she was just saying, yeah, <laughs> mm. that's what we were saying. But so like what I'm power. saying is that does the Labour Party support the legislation or not? No, they do support the legislation, but again, this is a political tact. I really... I really do not envy their position, right? Because everybody just sits there online constantly bitching and moaning, going, Dude, going to pass that law anyway. Do the same. But the thing is that if they don't, <laughs> then the Murdoch press is just going to hit them. They know that if they do that, they have signed their death warrant. You know why they completely turned against Julia Gillard? They gave her a, a, an opportunity for a second. And then the contracts came up for, like, I think ABC's foreign channel that goes to, like, I don't know, Fiji and Norfolk Island or whatever. Oh, dude, by the way, someone said something which is so on point. <laughs> so I'll let you continue. But they said, Ali, you're the SBS to Friendly Geordie's ABC. <laughs> <laughs> They're basically saying, Friendly Geordie, you are ABC and I am SBS. Yeah. <laughs> on point. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm the drum, <laughs> you're the you. feed. And you're out Yeah, yeah, I'm out <laughs> But sorry, continue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and so that came up and then Gillard said, yeah, we're just going to put this out to tender. In other words, was not going to give Murdoch a sweetheart deal, even though they're just going to offer it. And Kevin Rudd was just saying, fuck you, we're just giving it back to the ABC. But even that wasn't enough. And Murdoch cracked the shits at that and that's where the coverage just went 100% negative. So they know that if they are going against Murdoch in this in this vote, then they've signed their death warrant for the next but, election. But they will be punished they for that. Have they not? Like like you said, in whatever whatever you, the, the stat that you give that in 80 years, Sydney Morning Herald has only supported the Labour Party six times. Mm. Every time there's an election, the Murdoch media overwhelmingly supports the liberal party and the the Murdoch media like the vices you know the ones that are supposed to be su- supposed to be mm. left leaning stay like either neutral or also against labor if the labor party changed their tax and instead of saying we'll try to appease them as much as possible they just openly fucking side with google they just say no we believe in freedom it's of net neutrality we believe risky. that everyone should have the same say what they get out of that is potentially the overlord's blessings. And also, you get Biden administration's blessings too. That's true, because I do remember this, that Biden rang up Scott Morrison. And I think that the word on the street was that he was just saying, what the fuck is this Google law? Mm. Because obviously his overlords are telling him, get something done about this. <laughs> And obviously he talked about climate change as well, which is amazing that he has actually done way more for climate change than any human being in history with like the stroke of a couple of pens, which is Ooh, incredible. Biden. Yeah. Well, he really changed the game. Enough that what, like at the press Paris club. Accord? 
Huh? Rejoining Paris Accord. Well, that's one of the many actions that he took. But basically, he just signed an executive order saying every US government department now has to put climate policy at the centre of its policy build. From and now he on. has instructed wow. the State Department and Pentagon to um, join climate change with uh, security policy. That with climate change and refugees are security. So he's saying like he's intermixing both of them. Wow. Which is bo- but it's also just like knowing that the US is now on the side of climate change. Just that thing, That's Biden getting cool, elected yeah. without him doing anything is like it, it, it had such an effect that uh, did you watch Scott Morrison's uh, press club? I'm the only moron that watches that <laughs> shit. Uh, his, his speech, he was he basically completely changed tunes. Jordan actually pointed out that because of Biden. I came up to Jordan and I was like, hey, Jordan, have you seen like how uh, Scott Morrison's flip-flopping and he's uh, looking towards a carbon neutral 2050? And Jordan was like, yeah, that's because of Biden. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Mm. He's basically, what a fucking... He's there's an there's sluts, sluts for like lack of a better word. Like yeah. when Scott Trump Morrison comes is in, a full blown he's slut, nativist. He? When Biden comes slut. in, he's like, actually, I kind of like a wind energy all for certain. It does not kill birds anymore. Yeah, he he's the lowest of the low. Scott show Morrison, show shame, no backbone at all, none. Mm. Um, but I think that yes, it's not at the position. The thing is. With the current power balance, it is really difficult to trick 50% of the population into voting for the coalition when it clearly supports six billionaires, right? Like, it's it's an entire power structure and apparatus there to (coughs) benefit not even the top 0.0001%. Like, like literally just like, well, it's on more than one hand. That is some representation, you know. That, That, getting that into power all the time is a big ask. And they only ever win usually by a couple of seats. Mm. I think that they are just looking... And they wouldn't even know where Google was going to go as well because maybe Google doesn't give a shit. Maybe I'm just thinking this all in my head and this is all just a bunch of coincidences that are all lining up. But the Labor Party would be shooting in the dark about this and I know from talking to people in the Labor Party, they are just... What's the word again? Like learned helplessness like a Pavlov dog, right? Like they've just been beaten by the Murdoch press and the Fairfax for so long that they, they kind of just sit there and they're just like, that's enough. Like they, they just, that's, that's how they think. So they wouldn't think, they wouldn't be sitting there being like, let's take a risk and side with Google on this one. And I think that that's the other thing as well is like uh, you can, it, like what happened with the US and what happened with Alex Jones as well, you can turn him off the internet, but he still has radio. So you haven't really silenced him. You've kind of handicapped him. Mm. And you think it's the lesser of two evils? Hmm? You think it's the le- ultimately it's the lesser of two evils? Google, as a master, yeah, so much better than the mining industry. In fact, well, I mean, maybe of even Google. Surely you agree that one hundred percent terms yeah. of environmentalism. As, you know what else would be amazing about Google? Even though it wouldn't matter because you now just mining wouldn't be the same as data. But it would be really good for this country if, when data starts to rise in importance and wealth that they kind of sit there and they're like, yeah, we don't care if you collect your resources revenue anymore. You don't have to ship it to offshore companies. Right. You can actually have a, a tax on resources and we don't care about that kind right. of stuff. I think that a lot of those things Google would be fine with. And you know what else as well? Right. I think that when it comes to Australia, what do they really want from Australia? They pro- they, they just want our data. Right. They already you know have what, that. Do you know what dogs? They, my... Yeah, they do want those. Yeah, with cannons on their back. <laughs> but here's my counter argument. Who doesn't? This who scary, doesn't dude, want that? You would trade your dog for that. Uh, that's I scary. I'm but a you know at least what? put his brain in one of them. What Google's <laughs> incentive is in Australia, I honestly think Google doesn't even care about the money. Like to them, this is peanuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What they care about is the precedent, Example. right? Like they don't want... Because Australia is what twenty five, which is why I think this was the wrong place to <laughs> to actually bring up about this legislation. You know what would have been a better place? A better fight would have been the UK. What are they doing the same? Bigger market? No, they're not. But I'm just saying, like, if instead of Australia, if the UK was passing this legislation, it would matter more because, like, at the end of the day, we're too insignificant for Google to completely change their tune, right? So they. I don't think it's going to happen. I think eventually they will negotiate a settlement. But let's say it, they don't end up negotiating a settlement. The Google Google will pull out from Australia. The market is too s- insignificant for them. 
um, the money is also insignificant, but the precedent is bad. Because if, if it works in Australia, it could end up happening in other countries, and that would be... That's the worst nightmare for Google. Does that mean so like an exodus to fucking like Yahoo or something? What? Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll have it was, uh, apparently Finally. there's, there's going to be a Koshy's new search. investment strategy pays <laughs> off. Have you heard about this? Apparently it's going to be called Ask Murdoch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Wouldn't that be dude. amazing? They might as well do that and just have like, instead, you know, Ask Jeeves, I was a little anime guy. It's just fucking Rupert Murdoch's face like, eh. Oh, that's sick. You wouldn't even have to do that much. No, you pretty much just have to put is. the glasses on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. no, you're right. You definitely, that's what they're really looking for there. They're looking to set an example. And I think, you know what else is really interesting about this? And I think this was all just accelerated by COVID. But out of this, I, I don't know. Maybe it was the Trump presidency was like the last hurrah for... Uh, the fossil fuel industry and the banks. But it really does seem like uh, the, the new masters of the world now are China. And I think that that is, like, it's kind of just a foregone conclusion now. Like, the rest of it is kind of just this lag time of everybody just, well, Rihanna's still on TV. But in terms of where capital is now, it's in China. Right. And I think that that's what happened throughout the COVID thing was that, same thing with um, Scott Morrison. Just Scott Morrison mouthing off. China, again, insignificant. Who cares what Australia thinks? But setting the example and just showing everybody, no, 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 we're in charge now. Right. So they just put in trade tariffs just to show the rest of the world, like, you, you can't... The, the, the rules that were there before are no longer there. Mm. I think that's what was happening there. And I think that really the United States has kind of uh, just... Mm, uh, what's that? What's that anime film? Ghost in a Shell itself. Who's the states has done that? Don't you think? The United States has just transmorphed all of its money and all of its intelligence into a giant internet cloud. <laughs> that's what yeah. it is now. It's just in the cloud. But I mean, that's the whole world. That is the whole world. But that's what they have been doing. They have been slowly transferring everything that they used to do as Ali's always constantly pointing out that the US used to produce things and now it doesn't really do anything it's just all in the stock market or whatever and yeah. they've been putting more and more of it into Silicon Valley and so now I think that America is more just it's America online yeah, it's, as opposed to America Skynet the other thing is like yeah. I th I th uh, the other thing that I was looking into you know how Google isn't in uh, China right uh, because of censorship stuff it's, oh, it's not that's in, technically right. not true so yeah the Google search engine isn't in China but there's a lot of infrastructure that... Because I think what happened, for, from Google's perspective, this is, this is my it. opinion, they, didn't, they don't care about the censorship stuff. Like, if the U.S. government didn't exist and the U.S. government wasn't, didn't have, like, an animosity thing with China, they would be more than happy to censor all the Winnie the Pooh references from Google. But because the U.S. government has this hawkish approach towards China, they can't outrightly say that, yeah, yeah we'll censor it for you. So they ended up having to, um, they ended up having to like move their search engine, but they left the infrastructure over there. So all the companies that provide that stuff in China have tie have uh, they have links with Google, and uh, Google is working with them for other shit to like um, uh, creating like you know next generation cars that apparently hover like all of their AI stuff. They are, um, because I think Google recognizes the potential that China is. Well, not just the potential, what it already is. And so they want to have some of their fingers in China too. So what I'm saying is like Google is truly universal at this point. Mm. Like they even have their hands in the enemy's pie, even though we'd like to assume that, yeah, China's completely kicked them out. But isn't America just a model for the world? Like how's China different apart from like, they build more buildings, ooh, ghost towns. <laughs> Isn't the whole world going, I mean, obviously everyone, you know, data uh, sort of, even in terms of like the market. The stock no, market, no, 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 no. I think that that's exactly what, no. First of all, that was an economic philosophy that was put into play and it was like an economic experiment to see what happens is what the US started doing in the 80s yeah. and kind of just stubbornly stuck to for the next 40 years. Yeah. China is the opposite. China is... They do produce. I mean, they are the manufacturing of the world, I suppose. They yeah, but again, they're trying to get rid of it and they're trying to move into that kind of stuff yeah. as well. But yeah. again, America had the idea of just like, let the market decide. Yay. Yeah. 
And I guess at the end of the day, look, they're going to help Labor win the next election. It looks like they were right. But <laughs> China, <laughs> China is not that model. China is not let the market decide. It is the government being like, right. no, I have all the stats in front of me and I don't have a selfish incentive, so I'm going to decide. Yeah, I'll do. But how different is that? Their corporations are fundamentally different. Their corporations often have board of directors, sometimes even manager directors that are straight up Communist Party members. So but if you're talking about fundamentally different, like, what, what, like pr- on a practical level, it might be different. But you know, China has the government uh, power base. America has the corporate power base. Obviously, they're different, but they still have similar interests. Like Google doesn't want America to collapse. Well, that's not what, be competitive. That's what, like, we need to yeah, but that is argument. not its main focus. <coughs> that's the difference. Right. Yeah, Whereas, okay, like, sure, I, sure. I, I truly do think that. I really do think that Trump, it was such a perfect moment in human history that will just be forgotten and swept over. But that really was the moment that AI took over. The moment where they just oh, blacked Trump out right. of existence. Right, yeah. Just doesn't exist anymore. You can't see what he's thinking. Yeah. yeah, you'd rather not actually, you know. That's actually, actually <laughs> you know what? But no, Trump but, is, Trump but is, is. But that is kind of a good. Actually, that is a, that is a good answer because it's like China. A government should have the the, the power to do that. I don't know if a company should, and a company did, and they did that. They silenced him. Yeah, like that wouldn't happen in China. No, it'd be the government. That, again, Trump wouldn't have happened in China. Yeah. As we were pointing out in a previous podcast, Trump would never have been president and it's nothing that to do with his ideology or anything like that. that. Was oh, was a, it? Yeah, that was a It's never to do with his ideology. It was the fact that he has done no, no public, public service. service. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, like if you ask a Communist Party bigwig, um, if Obama, like not Trump, like forget Trump, like Obama, George Bush, uh, do you, uh, would you, would, would they be in a position of power in China? And, and his response wasn't that I'd, I'm not saying that how they're not talented or they did bad jobs. I'm just saying, as a rule, Obama or George Bush would have been they would have been they would start off as a village leader. Yeah, you do not give like all every Communist Party member that comes to those top position or gets in the Pulit Bureau has managed hundreds of millions of people. They keep switching their states, right? Their, their yeah. system you is... You this too, I'm actually yeah. like, I'm doing a, I'm doing like a lot of research on this and I'm doing a video on Holesworthy Live about this, but their system is so fundamentally different to ours. It's, it's almost unreplicable, but it's become this beast, this efficient beast, where every person that comes into a position of power in China has had incredible experiences. They've managed hundreds of millions of people yeah. in different huge states, They've managed trillions of dollars worth of, uh, like I said, you know, how their companies have board of directors and CEOs that are part of the, these people know exactly how to do things. And they have a lot of fucking experience. So like someone like Obama is super talented. I'd have no doubts about it. But like he had to learn everything when he came into power. Yeah. And like he says himself, he was probably the in the best position to be the president once he was not eligible for the presidency anymore. Uh, he, w- he was saying, I think it was on David Letterman or Conan or something, that was like, I've just figured out how to be a president. And that's, like, you need experience for that sort of shit. It's just a fundamental flaw that a lot of our Western system has that we, we, we do a lot of stuff on our gut feeling, and China has just completely eliminated that. It's like, there's no gut feelings involved. Like, just, you they're just have diff- to do, yeah. you have to pay your dues. But they're there's just, just different beasts, because, again, that, that, that... Well, I'll tell you this, though. Like, look, Australia's system isn't as efficient... As well. But it's a hell of a lot better than America's. Mm. Yeah. Wait, w- w- what system Australian? Yeah, look, yeah. To get to the position of a premier or to get to the position of prime minister, you can just get elected on a whim. But you really have to do your dues for at least 10 years but in you parliament. You need to figure out how it all works. I'm that's usually not partisan about this stuff, but that's more true for the Labour Party than for the Liberal Party. The Labour Party, because it was set up on the socialist and communist back in the day ideas right well, I'm their a, system now, now I'm out again. again all that work undone they actually and have they lose by one vote <laughs> in the next election <laughs> they have well, a better merit to, they have a better meritocratic <laughs> system you have to pay more of your dues than the Labour Party you get people like fucking Malcolm Turnbull for instance he was the Prime Minister what did he do he was an Bank investment God. banker that just does not happen in China 
No, he I know that, but what I'm saying is he was in, no, no, but he was in Parliament for ten years. It's nowhere near as good as China's model, where it's like you start out. Well, actually, you know what? Obama did start out as a community organizer and then just got promoted to Senate. And then president. Yeah, that's what someone was but, saying. I bet Obama was a community organizer. It's like, yeah, dude, yeah, but that yeah, exactly, would get yeah. you inside the door in China. Like, if you do that, sort of like, okay, fine. Now you come in the office, go make me tea. That's what community organization gets you in China. <laughs> go make me tea. Well, that's that is it's a it's a noble job, but no, like no, you but, have to. Yeah. People that become the head of the Chinese state have been in politics for a minimum thirty to thirty five years. Yeah. It's, Without, did, it's just not but possible. You know, but to do you it know what? A lot of Americans uh, still sort of like glorify those old days of like the, uh, I don't know what the system's called, but it's like, I think it's, it's like the, there's a name for it. It's like, but anyway, that exactly, you know, that that's sort of what, uh, appre- that's what apprenticeships were. You know what I mean? It, it's, a, it's a similar, it's like America was like that. You couldn't, you had to be in a trade for like 10 years for certain, uh, for certain But not for politics, man. You've got like people like JFK that were like, my daddy has said that I would be a great president. And the tragedy is most Americans think he was a great president. Was there any presidents that had to work their ass off for like... Lincoln. A few, but like, but that's just not how... A lot of times people that actually work their ass off end up not getting elected because there's two... They're seasoned politicians. It's all the other shit. That the Hillary stuff, right? You yeah. get some. But it like definitely Hillary. does. Like, yeah, if you, true, you look true, at all true. of the world leaders, well, I'm kind of just basing this off Lincoln and Caesar now, but it's definitely true. Anastabe. They they faced a lot of adversity to get to the position of power that they were in. And yeah. they had a lot of different experiences in different aspects of government. So Caesar, for instance, had... A, uh, time in the military first and then he moved into like being a magistrate and then he moved into being consul and then he moved back to being a general this time and then he came back and so he understood how the mechanisms of power in that society actually worked mm, mm, mm. yeah there's a lot of people that just don't like yeah. is, for instance trump yeah, no that's... idea about government never had any interest in running for it just straight into the jobs like why is like because my name's in a building you know and then it was just in and you know, and, and you can see this it's difference. It's not going to be the same as somebody who yeah. spent time in the military, yeah. spent yeah. time as a lawyer, spent time, uh, you know, being like a governor, spent time being a consul. And obviously, it's not the same. and obviously, it's not some sort of hard and fast rule that if you're like a businessman, you're going to know how to run an economy well, or you're just going to not be corrupt. In fact, if anything, you would know how to not run an economy yeah. well. But but is there? There's Look, not a lot the political of, not a, economy is different from economy. There's like, not a lot of corruption in terms of Chinese politics. Oh, there's a lot of corruption. There is no doubt. But then you have to like it more corruption than Australia. But you have like there are certain things that are just look. If you look at you know that scary Communist Party that red room where like all of them sit. Yeah, like if you, that like is scary. If you say. it is scary, but like if you all of those six hundred parliamentarians in China. You make a list of them, right? Mm. And you check how many of them came from POV backgrounds and how many of them came from privileged backgrounds. And you do the same list in the Australian parliament, you will see a fucking huge difference. Yeah. 95% of Australian parliamentarians went to private schools. Yeah. Most of them come from really privileged class. Yeah. In the history of China, like, like since 1947, uh, 1949, the current Xi Jinping, the, car, the Winnie the Pooh, he is the only head of state that is actually a princeling who was who came from a privileged background. Right. They're they're all they've created this one organization. I can't remember the name, but, but it's the envy of it, it's the envy of every corporation in the world. Mm. It is the most sophisticated HR recruiting process that China does. They choose people literally from the grassroots on whims of like they will potentially do great things. Okay. They recruit that from all over China. The bottom layer of how many people they recruit at any given point is around 35, sorry, 60,000 people. And then they keep rising up the ranks. Yeah. And then eventually the pull-up is like 13 people. This, it, and these are like, they're supposed to be the most um, vibrant and most um, um, enterprising young kids. And it, they make it, a, make it a point to, to make sure that all of these people that get selected don't get selected because they come from influential families. Mm. And this HR group that recruits all of these people is only subservient to the Politburo right at the top. 
All of these, they don't come under anyone's control. It's and they have cool. created the most system. sophisticated HR recruiting process. And I think most corporations would envy it. Let See, alone that's even an interesting part that China and other Asian countries, now that I think about it, they all have that system. They all have this system of like, in Australia, it seems like if you're going into working for the government, it's because you weren't talented enough for the corporate sector a lot of the time. (laughs) Or you want a cushy job, right? Not Albo. Huh? Albo's legit. Albo would be fit right in in China, you know? Yeah, but like the the immediate inclination or the glamour of it is kind of just like going to corporate law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some people that want to work in the public service. But for instance, like, look, the ATAR to get in for... Law at UNSW was like 99.9 or whatever. My degree was 95. It's not like they're like way worse, but they're not the cream of the crop. Yeah. They're still pretty smart, but they're not the smartest. Yeah. But I remember that when I was in South Korea and they were saying exactly the same thing about Japan. If you want to get a government job, you have to take this really tough bureaucrat test at the end of your university degree. And then you can get like a low level government job. But it's like... It's really sought after. And I remember the guys that were studying for it, right? Like, you know, I saw them in inauguration day or whatever. And then, like, you know, at the end, they'd just be walking in in some military uniform being like, hey, Jordan, how was your year? Like, they they were just in the library the entire year. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Yeah, Japan does the same thing. So it's not actually specific to China. You're all right, which... Uh, it saves us from the Pantera, Pantera, Pantera stuff. Same thing applies in Japan. They, they're they just way more meritocratic. South Korea is similar. We just do our politics slightly different. But it's a cultural... No, well, it's just like a thing of like a... I don't know. There's there's this... There's this idea... I, I think just the myth of democracy is seeped too far into the West. The but this idea of like, anybody here can be deputy prime minister. Yeah, they can. Right. And look at what that results in. Barnaby Joyce. <laughs> I think there'd be better yeah. people to be the second most not, powerful man in the country. But it's, it's not True. just that. Trump, if, if anything, Trump was reflective on, on this, the idea that Westerners tend to uh, see more merit in um, glorifying someone that might be more inclined to a history of business than a history of governments. Government, like look at the reporting on Bernie Sanders. Government, a government job is seen as someone that's sort of like a leech, low life, lazy person. Yeah. See? And there's elements of truth to that, I would assume. But I mean... Well, I mean, it's kind of the same in it, Korea. Like, it, it is referred to as like, they call having a job in the bureaucracy. God's job. God's because, job. Yeah, because everybody knows that once you're in there, you're set. And it's yeah. the same thing in Pakistan. They do have exactly yeah. the same system there. But do you think there's any merit to that sort what? of... I suppose it's not black and white, but I mean... You no, know, in fact, I already know the answer to that. It's like, it, it is stupid to say that. You can't be like, people in government are lazy. It's like... What about CEOs? They're smart. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's just not, it's just not accurate at all. All right. Well, anyway, let's right? be- before we get canceled, let's move on to Why a different topic. Ca- Come on, this I don't know, man. Like anything to do with China is just like really fucking tricky. And nah, I, dude, everyone's so agreeing. Everyone's saying the West's is war. The Western wars killed more. Actually, I have a really good meme which is just about this. It has nothing to do let's with China, it. but. Should we watch it? Should we watch yeah. this meme now because it's apt? Yeah, and then move on nah, to our I thought Myanmar that you could go into the Myanmar chat, did you? No, not without us right. reacting to your memes. Thank you so much for sending them in. Make sure that you send them to Ali's email account, which I have no idea what it is, but I'm sure he'll fill <laughs> you in on the details. Friendly Georgies <laughs> or my Instagram. Also, thank you for all the follows. That you really, got some? It, it, yeah. It, Where it, you at? I just told them that I had like a high school trauma and. Um, How many? Everyone wanted to pitch in. Yeah, like over 200 or something. Well, I, I'm about to Whoa. reach my target of 1,350. It's, it's almost there. But check this out. This is this is exactly about that. It's, it's fun. It's like Make sure you contribute don't, if you don't have Don't cancel it. us for this because like it's a joke, but it's not my <laughs> meme. Oh, no. It's I'm a meme. scared. Okay. Ali's scared. It was Ali yeah, all along. Ali, he was going to be... Ali said that he laughed at this for 10 minutes straight, I so did. he said that both of us probably won't. All right, okay. Right. So, I just hope uh, it's not too racy. What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a physician. I want to invent a kind of medicine. People who think it will never die. That's a very lofty goal, and I like it. That's very specific, too. Nice. Okay. Okay. What would you want to be in the future? I would like to be a terrorist. A terrorist. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that is cancelable. Isn't that the greatest uh, meme of all times? Jesus, that was a TikTok. That wasn't even a meme. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to watch it again or should we just not see the end of it? Uh, well, you know, in for a penny. Okay, one more. Why again? <laughs> one more. Why again? It cancel. It's worth watching again. Come well, on. What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a physician. I want to invent a kind of medicine. People who drink it will never die. That's a very lofty goal, and I like it. That's very specific, too. Nice. Okay, okay. What would you want to be in the future? I would like to be a terrorist. Is this real? Yeah. It's an educational video of, like, this is what happens. I think the I think the second one is an educational video. That is my <laughs> guess of just like if you say this, you will get your ass spanked. Um, all right. Well, yeah, it dude, was, that uh, was that was great. <laughs> that is fact. There's so much. There's too much to unpack in that to finish on. So I'm just gonna leave. Anyway, so was it this first one from China or Japan? I don't know. I think maybe Japan. I'm not sure where it was from, but I, I, don't PewDiePie don't focus on like that. PewDiePie got cancelled. Is that true? I didn't know that. Oh Anybody my cancel? god, how is he going to go by with his <laughs> 100 million plus subs? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, let's move on to the Myanmar one real quick because we're going oh, we to soon run out of time. Oh. We'll do the. Do you want to just. Okay, let's just do the. Oh, all the memes more together. memes. May, may as well. All right, next one. Oh, actually, Jordan, this Opa. one's for you. Check this one out. Hello, Koala Killer. Yeah, it hasn't yeah, been it hasn't opened yet. Opened yet. Like it? Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Jiggly, jiggly, jiggly. jiggly. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Uh, is that Holy shit! Is that Barrel yeah. right? Ballsy motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know which meme's better. Like that, that, that really topped it, man. That was funny. Dude, yeah. that guy what was the crazy. hell? So and they were both there. Yeah, they were both there. That's, that's amazing. Really they heard that. They definitely heard that. Oh, that's. I think. She, I think she was directly talking to him. Well, I thought it was on filming, but it, it, either way, I'm sure that they knew. <laughs> Wait, was there an echo for this? Oh, shit. I don't know. Well, that's your problem. The point is, it was amazing. All, right. All you need to know is someone said koala killer to Gladys Berejiklian's I'll, I'll, I'll face. Heckled koala I'll killer. I'll play it again without our, mics, uh, without our mics, because apparently I think maybe that was doing it. Uh, now I'm going to get some peas. Hello, Koala Killer. Killer. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't yeah, been opened yet. Opened yet. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Jiggly, jiggly, jiggly. <laughs> All right, look, nothing's gonna beat that, but I don't think so. Here's another one in this one. Honestly, whoever did that, raise the bar for us all, sir. That is really, to quote that fat guy from the 80s, democracy manifest. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. Whoever you are, sir, I salute you. This pee's for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, uh, one more. And this one's for you, miss. For me, cool. <laughs> Bosnian mobile. <laughs> they just say, did you get it? What do the what do the texts say? 
Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the Serbian one just said, this is Serbian latest technology. This is chicken pulling a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this is Bosnia's <laughs> latest technology. It's just a Mercedes. <laughs> I would have much preferred it if I said Croatian. But, you know, well, I'll yeah, allow well, it. I'll allow it. Uh, close enough. Yugoslav. Yeah. All right. Um, and then... <laughs> All right, last one. Which but is you didn't like the fact that it was a chicken pulling a car no, for like Serbia? I like that a lot. Because <laughs> even is a big supporter of Serbia, I liked it. Mm. All right, this last one's for uh, Jordan. What's it say? That says Jordan waiting for Labour to win an election. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, look, it's just kind of like a SpongeBob SquarePants thing with that up there as well. It's just like you look at me and then 27 years later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, it, it, don't speak too soon. And then I it just pulls feeling. straight out of that meme straight onto the original, the Richie <laughs> yeah, Rich poster. The Richie Rich one. That was our memes for today. No, that there was you good. Go. All right. Thank you for that. Do really appreciate everybody that sent those in. Those were great. Yeah. And the, the, uh, the first meme... Is on me. I decided to play that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, that also awesome. because I, 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 because I'm also third world, so I enjoyed it. He's a because that. Kid oh well, let's be honest. We all did. <laughs> because like I swear, I know that kid. When I was growing up, <laughs> like, I want to be a terrorist. Dude, I had friends who were like when growing up. You asked them like, "What do you want to do?" I want to be a gang member. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Not in that action. They were like, yeah, they were like, yo, uh, they wanted to be like criminal kingpins and shit. That's real third world shit. Damn, well, that, that was their aspiration. Yeah, yeah, like mafia dons was what they wanted to do. Actually, That's now that sick. I think about it, I went to Alexandria and there was kids there saying that. Alexandria. I remember one kid getting up. How psycho is this? Everyone else, what do you want to be? Fireman. Someone said handbag, which to this day I still laugh <laughs> at. And when I was six, I was like, ah, ha, ha, handbag. But... Uh-huh. One of the guys said, I want to be a gangster and then I want to blow up the world. <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? Is that? That's is usually mean? in order. All right, let's move on. Like, quickly, let's do a move on to the Myanmar one because we've got like 10, 15 minutes at most. Actually, that's plenty. <laughs> so, All right, but make sure on. that you stay tuned for the Uplay podcast where we will be dissecting something that is much more pressing in global affairs. Just how good was Sting? The answer... <laughs> He's extremely <laughs> So make sure you give us money for that. Now, <laughs> <laughs> what do you, uh, you want to hang around give for us that. Money for that. You want to hang Miss, around for that. Have you guys been following the news? Because I, I know cause I it happened just have, yesterday. Most certainly have not been following the news. I did not follow the news. The have best you heard time. of They the didn't place? have it on ABC Business when he was that's in the right, gym. That's right. So he's got no chance to see it. The hilarious thing is I only watch the ABC. That's regular. Uh, that and uh, I don't even get my news, news from uh, Helen You saw Dalton when anymore. I was on there. Yeah. Yeah. I did live. Yeah. I was working out and Jordan's face like flew over a Chinese flag <laughs> in ABC News. And I was just like, my life is so Wait, weird. what? <laughs> They're still like, uh, because you appeared on China Chinese Daily. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah but just, and and yeah. so this podcast was great for that reputation. Yeah, of course. Well, ev- every podcast is. Let's every not sell ourselves right. short. Just like today's podcast. Uh, and yeah, somehow I, I people think that we're sympathetic to the Chinese. But we weren't sympathetic. We're acknowledging that they're bad, but like, just recognize there are some stress. Hey, that's why I'm here. I'm the one that says they're bad. Okay, Don't sorry, worry anyways, about um, it. No, yeah, you just dude, have to say they're awesome. Come in, <laughs> come I up. feel that quota. Yeah. So yesterday, <laughs> Burma. Have you heard of uh, Myanmar slash Burma? I gotta say, hell, uh, no, not really. I know. You know even Burma. Burma? I've heard of like Burma. a Burmese python. I know you, know, you would have heard about I've no their leader, Su Chi. Oh, yeah, Aung Su Chi. Su Chi. Su okay. Chi. And the reason no, you would, shit about you know Burma. why? Isn't because India? that was the name of Joe's cat when we were growing up. Oh, that's right. Mm. Oh. Is Burma India? Because she was a Burmese. Huh? Is Burma India? She won the Nobel Close. Peace Prize um, recently. You've never okay. seen her. Uh, look, Damn, no. what a hot 70 year old. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, good ver- I'm not that versed in agree. Burmese current affairs. I'm afraid. Well, so look, Burma just recently, they had a, a military coup yesterday and they overthrew the government and they took power. Oh, really? Yes. And uh, wow. it's, it's, it's in important Burma. to know about Burma because mm-hmm. as an Australian, it comes under our realm of influence. So those of you who think, Oh, uh, Burma, who cares about Burma? It's That's like, me. I'm one of those. Yeah, well, it kind of <laughs> well, matters we all to us. <laughs> and well, I'll take we your have played it. a very big role in a recent discovery, which I will find okay. out. So, like, not we. We discovered we didn't the do Reebok shit. is still pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> the Australian good Defense as, uh, Force did. Humans, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Bur- so, there was a, uh, a military coup. So, what happened? Burma has been... All right, quickly. Um, Go on, it's all good. Burma was under British mandate and it was kind of part of India. Yeah. 
and uh, see it. and then like around late 1930s, um, Burmese people said that we're very ethnically different from India. It's true; they're more Asian than um, Indian. <laughs> that probably wasn't necessary. No, no but they do look like necessary. exactly those people. Uh, you know what? They are exactly that because she when you're in Indonesian. Malaysia, uh, what was the word again? Chindian. They look Chindian. Yeah, they look Chindian. Right. Okay. Chindian is also I mean, like yeah, it's like. Necessary. No, I'm joking. Why wasn't that necessary? I'm, that was more than necessary. Well, and I'll say it again. Chindian. She, Chindian she is like um, a, a common desi thing to say. But now that you've said it, yeah, as a yeah, white yeah, man, sure. it's off limits now. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, like, she looks like Indonesian. Um. Yeah. Itch. She does. Yeah, they do look kind of Indonesian, yeah. but I do think that that is like they, they, it is weird because they do have that look of somebody who's well, yeah. like Nepalese, I suppose. She's a legal alien. She's a Burmese woman in India. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't get that reference. You will if you pay your membership to Patreon. <laughs> Sign up for a three dollar a week Patreon for a very specific reference that you will forget next week. No, you won't. You will enjoy that one for life. I stand corrected. It's definitely worth the money. Yeah. So after, after <laughs> like, uh, so Burma so became, good. Burma became different from India in the late gotcha, 1930s. Gotcha, I'm following. Um, certain areas of what would be considered historical Burma became part of India, like places like Assam and shit. It matters eventually of like this ethnic distribution. But okay, so then what happens is um, they get independence around uh, 1949, I think. And then for up until 1986, it's heavily influenced by um, uh, China and uh, just communism in general. There's heaps of uh, warring communist factions that are, some are Maoist communists, some are other kinds of communists, some are some kinds of socialists, all the variations that you can ever imagine, basically fighting with one another for influence. After in the late 80s, close to like when China opened up its borders and uh, Soviet communism basically was about to collapse. So all of these uh, warring factions became kind of, they, they launched a truce with what at one point was the socialist version of the faction and they were running the show and they basically gave up their arms and military took over and they Burma became a strict... North Korea-like military dictatorship. Right. For years. This Aung Suu Kyi character, Aung Suu Kyi was basically, she is the daughter of one of the founding fathers of Myanmar during the decolonization process. She was living in, I think, in London. Around the 80s, um, her mom got sick and she came back to Burma to look for her. But this was a very uh, politically active time for Burma <coughs> because they were... The streets were filled with protesters seeking democracy from the military. So the military, because it was like a very s intense North Korea-like dictatorship, put Aung Suu Kyi in house arrest for like a couple of decades, which is the longest ever house arrest of a political dissident. She got Jordan's life. She got Jordan's... Well, Jordan chooses to do that. <laughs> <laughs> she was forced, forcibly do doing that. She was offered to leave, Love but she decided to yeah. stay. So she was a bit like Jordan. <laughs> Um, Too raw? No, yeah, no, but it's like, it's so accurate. Just <laughs> replace my aquarium with a koi pond. It's the same thing. <laughs> Sorry, go so on. Then, um, so then what happens is the military basically has her in house arrest. She becomes a household name in the in the Western world because just it, she's like a westernized... It, all the optics of it are perfect, right? She's a westernized woman, as mm -hmm. in like ethnically Burmese, but westernized woman in house arrest by a military dictatorship fighting for democracy, right? All of these things work out really well in the mind of like, you know, someone that constantly, you know how like Western journalists are, they look for heroes and look for villains, right? Yeah. So she fitted the hero category and the military fitted the villain category for them. So they gave her like a Nobel Peace Prize and everything and she became a really famous person. In 2010, there's intense pressure by- Hang on, was her house mad? 
<laughs> I don't know, but I'm guessing it was. She's, she was a rich woman. All right, I'm going to look that. I'm going to have to Google that shit, she was, Jamie. Yeah. She was like uh, the daughter of like a very influential man. I love how everyone at Friendly Geordies always goes for the house size. It seems to be a thing here. It's like, yeah. That's an Australian, Australian house. property. Yeah, it's, it's so Australian, Australian isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, see, invention. you're bloody... Oh, well, it backs onto a golf course. Yeah, you're, you're bloody saying you're above the plot property bottle first thing. Here's big as your hair. She's double brick. Yeah, you're not good for winner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go so on, around on. around the <laughs> early 2000s, there was, and even almost up until like uh, 2008, 2009, there was a lot of pressure by the West to basically dismantle this military dictatorship and open up the economy. There was that pressure from the West. There was the other pressure of uh, the Burmese economy just hitting the, d- because it's, it was like North Korea, right? The economy was really closed up. Um, the Chinese at this point had already opened up their economy and the only and they were trying to convince the Burmese people, uh, Gur- Burmese military saying like, look, you need to get these fucking sanctions off your back. Do it the way we did. Start doing start like fulfilling the demands that they're asking you to. It will eventually benefit you in the long run. The Burmese took that advice and they decided to f- formulate a constitution. Yeah. which came into being in 2008. The constitution was that we're not going to give up all our power to the Democrats, in this case, Aung Suu Kyi's party, which is the National Democratic League. We will continue... Sorry, I was just going to say, it's such a sick house. <laughs> show, show us the picture. Uh, and, and I'm pretty sure it is double brick. <laughs> oh, dude, that is a, that's an old house. You Don't you think it's old? old it's got I character, see. it's baller. <clears throat> Ang Su Chi's house in Ye- Rangoon, Yangoon. Whoa, looks like a house in looks Vietnam. Like house. Yeah, I want that house. That's Apart cool from house. the haunting part, that yeah. scares me. But that's, the rest of it is cool. That's what Ho Chi Minh looks like, by the way, basically. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, Hanoi, this one house. Hanoi, that one. 10 million people live in it. Lots and Wouldn't lots of surprise me. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> so in 2008, the military came up with a constitution that they backed. And the constitution was essentially a power sharing agreement where the military said, we're not going to give up all the power to you Democrats. We're going to continue to play a vital role. So it was a hybrid constitution, so still not democratic. (laughs) The conditions of that were that 25% of the lower house, their version of the lower house, is going to be reserved for military personnel. So in any parliament, 25% of the people are going to be serving military officers or recently retired military officers. Well, they be dressed in green or suits? Mm -hmm. Green, I think. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's maybe, a presence. Maybe, maybe suits because like they they have this. They also have a political front, which so okay. So in two thousand eight, they came up with that power sharing agreement, right? Basically, they also said that um, the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Home Affairs, the Ministry of Borders is going to be with the military. Like you cannot have uh, a non-military person in those ministries. And the last big thing was that anyone, which was particularly directed at Aung Suu Kyi, that anyone who has family members that are citizens of a different country can never be the head of state. Basically targeting Aung Suu Kyi because both her kids are British citizens. Mm. So the way they circum... So initially, Aung Suu Kyi and the National Democratic League boycotted the 2010 elections. That was the first elections that the military held. They boycotted that. What ended up happening was that um, the the political party, which was basically the front for the military, which I think is called the Unity Party. Oh, and by the way, just a little piece of trivia. Kevin Rudd helped set those up. What? He was the one that what? convinced uh, the military to hold an election. Mm. And he was, was just like, military? yeah, it was rigged. But huh? A what lot of Western... A lo- but it was... Well, you find out that it maybe it wasn't so rigged. So... Um, they hold an election. The Democratic, uh, the Democratic National League, the Aung Suu Kyi's party, boycotts the elections, and basically the Unity Party, which is the front of the military, end up uh, winning the entire elections by landslide because they just they had very little competition. Can I really quickly say, Swift the Parkley said sh- he or she, I am a new Patreon. How do you join up to the late pod? Should we just tell? Oh, them if you are a new po- Patreon, then like every. Uh, every week we upload a post that has the Uplate podcast. So just scroll through the dashboard and you will find all of the Uplate podcast. But okay, so... Um, cool. So enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. You've Wait. got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah. I hope that you're doing Is some that long... Yeah yeah. 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 You know what I heard happened once? It was the biggest compliment I've ever heard. 
some boys came up to me afterwards and they seemed like lovely fillers. One of them had that gay 80s moustache that every friend group in Queensland has to have one guy that is straight now having that for yeah, some reason. Love it. But it was one of those groups where you thought, yeah, you guys are nice party rousers. They drove from Brisbane to Melbourne once and back. And you know what? They listened to all the Up Late podcasts on the way. That's sick. And they said at the end of it, their brains just worked exactly the way, same way that ours did. <laughs> they, we had brainwashed them. So you can't listen to Uplate Live? We want to watch... No, you can't listen to Uplate Live. No, no, no. It's too saucy crap. for that. Yeah, we, this, yeah. you, you have to show out your love and get onto Patreon. Like, that's way too saucy yeah. for Twitch. That's a... Uh, um, yeah, that's yeah happening. it's too saucy to do it's live. It's the behind... It's the BTN. There's no, there's no way the Uplate can be live. But yeah. okay, so look, so... Um, the Aung Suu Kyi's National Democratic League boycotts the election. I will come to present a scenario. And um, the Unity Party and the army end up sweeping that election. Then what ends up happening is that there are by-elections uh, after the, uh, the, the election that the army won. And the National Democratic League ends up contesting those by-elections and completely sweeps. Then in 2015... They uh, contest the elections again, and they completely sweep the entire country. Mm. And last, uh, in 2020, in November, they had elections again, and the Democrats again sweeped it by winning close to 88% of all the votes. And the Who's army, voting for the Unity Party? Well... <laughs> oldies. Who's, and here's the other thing. Old, not just oldies, people that are like more into the... Um, People that support the military rule. They were benefiting during the military rule more than the democratic rule. Um, the, the, the thing that... There's a lot of stuff that's happened. So once the, once the Democrats started winning after 20, 2010 the by-elections, the economy started to open up. What Jordan is saying, Kevin Rudd brokering those deals. Uh, the sanctions were lifted off of Burma, now Myanmar. And they started making some money. But the... Interestingly, here's another interesting fact which uh, 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 um, Australia Sorry, discovered. Sorry, uh, you know what else? Just while you're talking about this, boys, how nice will it be when you can get on a plane again? Just be, yeah. I'll go to I'm, I'm, I'm I just game. really miss being on a plane and being really dehydrated and tired <laughs> and <laughs> like e eating so that shit powdered egg I love that shit while you're watching egg. an anime that is very subpar. Yeah. I miss that whole experience. So do I. I love it. I like I like airline food because I feel like I'm in uh, 1960s America on a plane. Like I like it. It's like here's your microwave dinner from the future. I like all that. Like I don't like it. I enjoy the aesthetic of it. It obviously tastes like shit, but I kind of and it's fun. So I agree. Yeah, I enjoy the whole experience and yeah. also kind of this feeling at the end of it of I just cheated death a little. Yeah. I'm in a okay. different time zone. Yeah. The Reaper can't find me here. <laughs> but apparently but I'll, sorry, I'll, 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 I'll bring you back to it. Here's something that I will I'll throw some carrots at you. No, Here's no, an interesting good. fact about I'm Myanmar. Listening. I'm in. Myanmar is now Burma <laughs> is now the biggest ice lab in the world. Most of Whoa. Australian meth Shit. comes from Myanmar. The estimates are that the Myanmar I've come in cl ice close contact. A business is close to eighty billion dollars. And which An is Suu more Chi is the kingpin. than their entire <laughs> formal economy. Really? And not only that, the, the assumption was, this is actually something that the Australian police force discovered, um, uh, the federal police discovered. The, because all of our meth is coming from uh, Myanmar, we, we assumed or we were looking into like where it's coming from and the assumption was that the ice business in Myanmar is really fractured. There's multiple syndicates that are running this thing. The Australian police force found out that no, it's not actually fractured. There is one guy <laughs> that runs the entire ice syndicate in all of Myanmar. Heisenberg. Who's apparently, according to some estimates, whose monthly turnover is $20 billion. He is the Pablo Escobar of today, but the only what? difference is, unlike Pablo Escobar, he hates media attention. And he is a Canadian Chinese guy. Who went there for better opportunities. Chinese Berg. Who earns $20 billion what? every month. Are you fucking serious? From this Met Can they get him? Well, they eventually will get him. But here's the thing. This is, the, this is where Myanmar's politics becomes interesting. Because without knowing what's going on over there, you don't know how to get this guy. Wait a sec. Canadian Chinese, do you mean like, he talks like this? Or he's like, hey man, how's it going? Talks he's like hey this. man, how's it going? I'm, <laughs> I'm Chinese. <laughs> 
so good. So, so Vape Nation. So Seth Rogen is running that country. He's like, yeah. just live it up, man. <laughs> he, yeah. he is, he's possibly... Seth Rogen. Yeah, he, he's, he's bigger than El Chapo. He is earning... He's the Pablo Escobar of today that goes unnoticed. Surely it's not accurate. Pablo. Surely Think it's not accurate. $80 billion it a be year true. It can't be true. It can't be one person. It has to be like a small fucking... That's what, um, that's what the AFP says. And that's what like... So a lot, a lot of estimates and everything. How's that possible? But, but this is how it's possible. When look, I'll come to the eventual cool thing. But this is how this happened. When the communists eventually disbanded mm. in Myanmar, the, all of those variants of the communists that were fighting against uh, each other, they were given a free reign to do anything that they wanted if they gave up their arms, unquestioned mm. by the military. They ended up getting into all of the illicit businesses there were. Right. And because they had basically the backing of the state, they were legalized illegal businesses. And that's what uh, basically created Myanmar's like fertile soil for something like that eventually becoming but one a one person. That's crazy. Yeah, well, that's one person. That's the discovery that we found out. It's actually not multiple people. It's one person runs the entire syndicate. Mm. But so... And and the and and Aung Suu Kyi come, came into a lot of fire because um, the Rohingya Muslims were getting killed mm. in Myanmar by Buddhist extremists, <laughs> and Aung Suu Kyi was basically like kind of okay with that. Right. She was okay with it because she thought if she if she let that happen, because dude, everyone in Myanmar hates Muslims, like hates these particular Rohingya Muslims. And they're Buddhist. They are they are Buddhist, but these Rohingya people are Muslims. Right. They say that they're not actually native. They're not actually native Burmese. They're uh, Indian Bangladeshis or whatever. So they so the whole entire public opinion just hates Muslims. And Aung Suu Kyi basically defended that, and assuming that that's going to keep her into power, the West kind of disowned her after that. The right. Nobel Peace Prize committee was considering taking her Nobel Peace Prize back, right. and now. In 2020, she was successful in the sense that the uh, population supported her and she won the elections in, in a landslide. Mm. But the military is now saying, um, actually, you know what? You are, you're you getting too powerful and I know you're trying to change some of those constitutional stuff that we put in, like having 25% of our representation. Uh, and also, we can't handle everyone getting too rich. So military coup back to like Shit. square one. But my guess is, Unle- I have, I've been looking at the news unless it's already happened. Myanmar slash Burma cannot go back to pre-2008. There's already too much money over there. There's already too many freedoms over there. This coup is not going to last long in its current form. Okay. There will be t- pressure and there will be some sort of a reversal. Mm. So, there you go. Here's an update. Now, wake up. But is the Bermuda Triangle real or not? That's right. <laughs> that's that's is it in Burma? <laughs> the Burma Bermuda Triangle Yuna. is very, very far away and from did Burma. Did she make it? Hey, that where's, lady? where's Burma? Did that lady make it? In Where India? do you think Burma is? In India, I said yeah, it earlier. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. I like all these little teeny countries that are like it, that, exactly what you were saying. Just all of those houses. Yeah, that's sick. I bet you that was probably the worst house it's there, the, and she lives there. That's it's punishment. It's, it's double Australia's sick. size in terms of population. It's close to 50 Whoa. million. It's not a teeny, it's a middle country. But it's a teeny island, right? Like, it's probably the size of North Sentinel. No, no, no. It's bigger. It's bigger than South that. It's Sentinel. a decent, it's a moderately <laughs> size. It's actually not even that, uh, that a <laughs> together like Bangladesh. There's mountains. There's Actually, that's why it's been in constant insurgency, because the topography is perfect for insurgencies. Mm, right, okay. So, it, it's, it's actually rather big country well scattered and and with a huge population is north sentinel a country made up of sentinels from the matrix (laughs) they're made of cheese balls man your ideas intrigue me and i wish to subscribe to your newsletter you think you're so smart and i had smoted the both of you yeah you did look the thing is that's all you really need to know this is missov's education to life just watch The Matrix 1, 2, and 3 a lot until <laughs> the message sinks in. S. Albanese said Agent Smith did nothing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and Vansity, Agent Smith didn't kill himself. And Vansity Oliver, after listening to that entire thing, says, hey, who here has tried meth? You know what I really... <laughs> I've nearly tried it. Uh, 
Technically, I think that I have. That does not surprise me. What? Are you serious? Well, yeah. Did you have like technically, and we'll talk about that in the Up Late podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, should, should we end now? But yeah, we yeah, will talk about that. We're over time. Yeah. You, so, you, but it was rad. I, whenever I hear these stories, I'm, I'm, you know, for all its failings and faults, I'm very happy to be in Well, Australia. now you can look at the, when you read the ABC and like the entire thing is filled with me and Marku, you know a little I bit know of context. straight up. Yeah. About it. No, dude, What's happening, where it, it came from, and where it's headed. Yeah, it's rad. And do you suspect... You see, like you said, you suspect that she'll get back in. And it'll be all good. She'll come back in in some form or the other. Do you she's like an her? extremely popular leader. What do, you, do you like her? Um, Yeah, she's all right. The thing is, like, man, whenever I look at these kind of things, I don't look at things as, like, a hero yeah, and villains. Right. I look at it as, like, their interests. Like, True. The, the military... Uh, she, she basically kind of represents what would now be corporate Myanmar. Yeah. yeah. She basically sure. represents yeah. the business interests. Well, so it's sort so of now yeah. you can look at, and, the and obviously the U S looks at business interests as good. It's good because it's like not. for them, democratic and, and corporations go hand in hand, right? Like mm. to them, like business interest means benefit for the country. Um, you might believe that you might not believe that, but whatever it is, China for, for someone who's like, oh, China's going to step in and liberate them. China has taken a different approach. China has basically, China doesn't like what's happened, but China said, you guys figure out your differences. The Western world and United Nations has said that we are against this takeover and we support the democratic forces. So let's see where this coin ends up. But I'm guessing that the status, this, this queue is not going to last long in its current form. Mm. All right, do you want to say goodbyes, Jordan? Appreciate your time. Uh... Yes, and also make sure that you sign up to the Patreon where we will be discussing more things of great importance, such as do you own any other hats other than that New York hat? We will find out on the Upload (laughs) podcast. I can tell you now. Well, you're not going to because that's why people are going to be signing up. And Ali, does he understand that Hawaiian shirts are supposed to have party colours as opposed to, like, I don't know, going to a funeral in Hawaii? (laughs) Hey. (laughs) <laughs> People die in Hawaii too, you know. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, now and we'll see nice. you guys <laughs> next week. See ya.